Kevin first in in Monroe, Michigan, listening on Sirius XM 131. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Um, I had a quick question for you. I know you were talking um, the end of, I think it was the week before, that you were talking about Revelation uh, 22-7, where it says the end is near. And I know you were talking about that you kind of got to read those in context. I was trying to get a little bit more understanding of that, because I actually heard those words um, actually a, a few months ago. What words? The end is near. Uh huh. Yeah. So, and I know that's I know that's quoted from Revelation twenty two seven, right? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I think I was talking about, I don't remember the conversation, but when I talk about the Book of Revelation, I oftentimes explain that it's John's expanded all of the discourse, and in the Book of Revelation, you have an introduction, and that introduction lets us know that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. And then in the prologue, the text goes on to say that Jesus made it known by sending his angel to a servant, John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. So here you have two words. One, you have the adverb soon, and then you have the word near. Um, So what we know immediately from the book of Revelation, that this is a revelation to seven churches in the epicenter of a Caesar cult. And they're told to be faithful and fruitful. They're going to suffer for a short time, but their vindication is going to be an eternal vindication. So what you have in the book of Revelation is analogous to what you have in other books of the Bible. The book of Revelation is not written to us, but is written to people in the epicenter of the Caesar cult. So it's not written to us, but it is certainly written for us. But that's true of Romans too. It's written to Roman Christians in a particular circumstance, in a particular epoch of time. But it's efficacious in every word for us in the 21st century. So that's what's going on. This is a revelation of what must soon take place. The time is near. And it's all about the coming of Christ in judgment or the coming of God, the triune God in judgment uh, on those who did not, uh, did not, recognize Messiah in their midst, not because they couldn't, but they refused to. So that's why this word soon and word near is used in the context of Revelation. Okay. That makes okay. sense? So, yeah, so I, cause I, the other thing I was going to ask about, too, is the other, the other verse, uh, I think it's 22.12, where he says, see, I am coming soon. I also... I also I wrote that on a piece of paper, put your house in order because I'm coming back soon. Yeah, so when, when we read coming, a lot of people immediately read into that a presupposition or a paradigm, meaning that that means second coming. And that's why a lot of people will say, well, Christ was, uh, was mistaken when he said that he was coming soon, when the truth of the matter is he has not come yet, and 2,000 years have elapsed. But Jesus here is using the language of the Old Testament prophets. If you're familiar with that language, you'll see that coming on clouds or coming soon is oftentimes used as judgment language. And that, of course, is the context of Revelation, which is an expanded all of the discourse. There is a coming of Christ in judgment And that coming means that the temple and Jerusalem are going to be manifestly destroyed. Now, the coming in judgment also portends something that's going to happen in the far future, which Christ has already communicated in the scriptures, and particularly in the book of Revelation, there's going to be a time when he comes again, a second coming, when when he comes and he then gathers her as bride and carries her over the threshold of Jordan into a new Jerusalem.